And then we get to our last pen cast chair. And that would be, why do we tend to restrict free trade? And it certainly seems like we should want it. Well, there's a number of arguments for why we don't like free, free, uh, free trade. Sometimes we don't like free trade because we're trying to protect a, um, a new industry, right? Like maybe electric cars or solar panels or, you know, you pick your favorite thing. So we don't want foreign competition to hurt us. We try to make it so that a domestic company is protected. This is usually a bad idea, though, because most of the time the companies then that are getting these special protections don't do very much to uh, protect themselves. An example of this would be Zenith got um, a protection for flat panel TVs from South Korean competitors like Samsung. Um, and it turns out that Zenith did nothing with that special protection. They underinvested, and after a decade or so, uh, the company went out of business. Um, a second reason would be that you're trying to save domestic jobs. Uh, certainly, if you're running for office, you're not going to get voted into political office by saying we're going to cut people's jobs because you're too expensive of labor. So then you create uh, free trade restrictions to protect those who make American types of products. Now, one actually legitimate reason to restrict free trade would be for national defense reasons. Um, obviously, we don't want our enemies making our planes for us or our bombs for us. Um, so that would be one of the rare examples where you might say that it's permissible um, to restrict free trade. And then finally, um, sometimes you see a restriction on free trade um, <coughs> You don't like how it's made. Uh, by that I mean uh, we don't like diamonds that are produced in war-torn countries, or we don't like shirts that are sewn by little children, that kind of thing. That might be another reason that would be permissible to restrict free trade. But for the most part, you don't see these latter two um, reasons given for restricting free trade. Most of the time you see these first two, and these are bad reasons to restrict free trade. What you're better off doing, as we can kind of see with the previous graph that we had here, is that if the U.S. can benefit from free trade, as it is here, they're consuming outside of the frontier, What the U.S. should simply do is allow free trade to exist, admit that in this case, right, if um, in this case, remember, the U.S. was really good at making candy and not making pens. So the pen workers in the U.S. are going to get laid off and get fired because the company is going to shut down. What the right. And so these pen workers are going to get really upset and they're going to, you know, vote people into office that are going to try to protect their jobs, and they're going to really be grumpy about things. But consumers as a whole benefit from free trade. So what we should simply do is bribe them, pay off the pen workers to not get so upset. Now, that may sound extreme to you, but it is actually what we use with something called trade adjustment assistance. Look it up on Wikipedia if you want. Um, it's the U.S. government program that we use to basically allow free trade agreements to exist. Is We give those who are displaced because of free trade, in this case the pen workers, we give them longer unemployment insurance, we give them health care benefits, we give them more things because maybe they won't be as grumpy about the fact that they lost their job to foreign competition.